When I was at college as an undergraduate student, that is at University College London, I did English history, not West Indian history, and it was not until I became a postgraduate student working for my doctorate that I began to do West Indian history. The name Elsa Gavaya had become a legend before she arrived in England in 1945. Most Guyanese mentioned her name with reverence and indeed awe, as she was the first woman to have broken the tradition by winning the one territorial scholarship in Guyana. That scholarship took her to University College London, and there, in her final year, she topped the class, won the Pollard Prize for English History, the prestigious prize that was awarded to the best history scholar at University College London. It was a feat which made the senior professor at UCL write to the director of colonial scholars and describe her as remarkable. An unmistakable feature of Elsa Gavaya's career is that she was the first person to teach a flagship course in West Indian history at this university. This was what she was recruited to do. Elsa Gavaya and this very special second year course in West Indian history became inseparable for three decades. I do the teaching in West Indian history, which is my special interest. And I also do the teaching in the history of Latin America. In addition to this, uh, I do research in West Indian history, which is the subject that most particularly concerns me. Elsa Govaya is foundational to this faculty. So foundational is she that even before she was so appointed, her appointment was called for, not by name, but by post, in the Urban Commission, which set up this university. The Urban Commission's report includes a specific reference to the need for a lecturer in Caribbean history when the university began to ensure the issue of Caribbean identity. And Elsa Govaya was the first such appointee. London is the place for me. London, this lovely city. Now, you plan to go to England soon, I gather. Um, what exactly are you going to undertake this time? At this time, I'm hoping to do some work in the Public Record Office, where, as I say, it's possible to find a great deal of material in a relatively short time. And there, the main object of my search is going to be to find the British West Indian slave laws. I'm particularly interested in British West Indian history during the 18th century, which is, of course, the great period of slavery, and I'm working on the slave laws, and this is one of the things that I should be doing in London during this summer. You can go to France or America, India, Asia, or Australia, but you must come back to London City. I wrote the historiography of the British West Indies as part of a series of historiographies dealing with the Americas. The object of this book was to discuss the work of historians of the British West Indies and to try to evaluate the work that they'd written. The author, for all her scholarly detachment, writes with an earnestness born of wide knowledge and deep sympathy, which relatively few West Indian historians have previously achieved. She writes in a clear, lucid, unaffected style, which is a pleasure to read. In general, Miss Gavire's criticisms are well-informed, penetrating and scrupulously fair. 
With her own wide knowledge of the West Indian past, she is able not only to describe what the author said, but also to explain why they said it. Well, my impressions of federal development, I should say, are those of a, an individual who is very much in favor of a closer union of the West Indies, so that to some extent, perhaps I may be regarded as biased. But I regard myself as a West Indian and that I should like to see the Federation succeed. Elsa Kapai was able to use West Indian history as a social science tool to explain to campus audiences the historical foundations of our modern West Indian dilemmas. She put history at the center of the enterprise of making us West Indians. For 30 years with her other colleagues, they ensured that the region came to understand for the first time, really, that they had a history. They were more than an appendage of the British Empire, but had something with its own internal dynamic. And in that regard, their graduates, people they taught, the teachers who left here in the 50s and 60s, Return throughout the Caribbean, not consciously doing it, but even evangelizing and building Caribbean identity. And crucial to that would have been the work of Elsa Govaya. We honor her first as a scholar. We honor her also as an inspiring teacher. And we remember her as our mentor exemplar. We honor her because she pioneered and established West Indian history as an academic discipline. And finally, we remember her for the person that she was. For Elsa Gavaya. And here we are remembering the dark woman who searched out meaning in the dust and left us the enigma of her going. I find contact with young students whose minds are open to new ideas, a very stimulating experience indeed, and even though it is also exhausting, I don't think I should like to do without it.